But now we're going to go to Ephesians 4 real quick. So if you turn to Ephesians 4 with me. I thought bitterness was just something little like, you know, lying, you shouldn't lie or anything. But I, after doing this, bitterness is so serious. It's so serious. You cannot overlook it. You can't just put it to the side like it's nothing that big or that. It's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. Ephesians 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What does bitterness do? It gets people to have corrupt communication proceed out of their mouth. We need to be edifying the brothers and sisters in Christ. And we'll get to if Hebrews 12 where it talks about how me having bitterness, can that bitterness can grow into other people because of me. Okay. Uh, my setting the example, no. Me setting the example is important. When you get on t camera, uh, when you stand up before people, whether it be a house church or you're meeting at a park or you're doing a video, um, you got to set the example. You got to watch your words. Sometimes I slip up and still screw up and I apologize and Lord forgive me. 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Grieve. And we're going to get to the word bitterness. But when you have bitterness in your heart, you can grieve the Holy Spirit. Your communication becomes corrupt. You start attacking people personally. It's no longer about, it starts out with this and it gets away from this and it's no longer about the word. You're just attacking each other personally. You're just being negative. Number 31, let all bitterness. So bitterness can grieve the Holy Spirit. And wrath, when you have wrath, it can grieve the Holy Spirit. And anger, when you get angry and it's not righteous anger, it's anger that comes from bitterness, it can grieve the Holy Spirit and clamor and evil speaking but put away from you with all malice let's see and 32 and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake hath forgiven you it grieves the holy spirit we talked about that when one is bit, has bitterness in one's heart and has come out through the mouth and it comes out through the mouth that's the evidence Romans 12, 18, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceful with all men. Notice it says all men. It's not talking about just brothers and sisters in Christ. It's talking about all men. And I believe it said if it be possible, because God knows that when you stand for truth and you do what's right, you make your home a godly home and you say, I'm not going to have anything to do with that sin. I'm not going to have anything to do with those false teachings. I'm going to stand for the word of God. You're not going to be able to live peaceably. But that's on their side. It's not your side that you can't live peacefully with them. It's on their side. They're the ones that don't want to live peacefully. But you are to try, try, try to live peacefully among all men. Notice that anger is related to bitterness. We've talked about that. Evil speaking is related to bitterness. All this backbiting and, and put, putting each other down on YouTube. It's based off bitterness. I believe it 100%. It's people getting bitter. They're letting that bitterness start out small and it starts growing and growing and growing until you explode and lash out on people. Um, notice that it says to be put away from you with all malice. Okay? You're to put bitterness and all these things here, but we're talking about bitterness today. You're to put bitterness, bitterness away from you with all malice. And I looked up the word malice. To regard with extreme ill will. To not not used, okay. You're supposed to tr treat bitterness like the verse says about hating evil. You're supposed to treat it like it's serious. It's extreme. It's an extreme thing that you need to get rid of. You need to get. That's what malice means. Uh, one of the definitions of malice. Mm -hmm. You need to get it out of your life. You need to fall on your knees, confess it before the Lord, pray that the Lord helps you get it out of your life. Get it out of my heart, Lord. It's a weed. I can yank it out, but if there's so much as one little root still there, it's going to come right back. And I've seen it with Brother Brian, and I've seen it with other guys, uh, and brothers and sisters, that will say, you're right, I shouldn't attack. 
I shouldn't be tagging people personally, and I shouldn't be arguing with people that are lost. Just preach the gospel to them. And here a month later, you see them getting into fights and arguments again. And they're attacking people personally again. And it's like, the only person who can rip that root out completely and get every single little root of that bitterness is God. You've got to take it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, is you can still preach truth. You can preach truth and still be kind one to another. Uh, you can be stern. You can be... You can have, uh, what's it called? You can have courage and you can have confidence that what you're teaching is true and you're saying it as it is and you're saying it with confidence. But you can still say it with kindness. Uh, one of the good videos uh, Brother Brian did once, um, I think Steve Anderson was coming out with videos and he was being on the news about you know, sodom, sodomy is just so wicked and evil, and it is, but they sh I'm not saying they should be put to death, but they should be put to death, you know, that kind of attitude, and Brian came out with a video, um, and I forgot the title of it, where he talks about sodomy, and he pours out his heart to them, saying, you need to repent, you need to change, you need to get saved so you can be changed by God, and stop being an abomination in the sight of God. And he did it in a way that he did it kind, but he was stern, with confidence. What you're doing is wrong, and you're going to go to hell for it if you don't repent. You can still preach something very serious, something very with such conviction and sternness, but you can still be kind about it. It's coming from your heart as far as true love, preaching truth, telling people that they're sinners, that they need Jesus Christ. Uh, lifting the body of Christ up, correcting someone when they're wrong, that's love. You can do it with love and kindness. You're not to be with the, what's the word people like to use, a jerk. You're not supposed to be a jerk about it. Okay. I don't remember where we left off. And I've already talked about how Brian, he's repented of this, but the example is he kept addressing lost people. The bitterness got to him and the anger and he started attacking people, using personal attacks here and there. Not, not that much, but it was there. And he, all he should have done was address the people by preaching the gospel to them. You're lost. You're on your way to hell. Here's the gospel. You don't want to go to hell. Here's how to get out of, how to, how to find God's grace. How to get that gift of salvation, which is God's grace. God saving you. Um, he starts off talking to the body of Christ, which is who I'm talking to, and the next thing you know, he'd be like, and you guys out there, brother, I love you, and I'm glad that you repented, and I'm glad you're seeing this, and it's tough to stop doing that, and I understand you're still struggling with it. Uh, I pray for you every day, brother. But, um, we talked about how you not change people's names. You're to correct false teachers through scripture. You're to attack, let's see, my, that verse. I always make that noise because I've, I've always worked so hard to memorize verses. And sometimes they're right there and sometimes they're not. But, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're to have anger and hate to towards false teachings. People who attack this book, people, not the person, but the attacking of this book. The um, people who are preaching false gospels, we're to have anger and hate towards that. We're attacking false teachings, okay? Uh, the evil, wicked spirit behind the person, okay? And our love for the person is to preach truth to them. Preach the gospel to them, show them through God's perfect written word what they're teaching is false. I've been corrected many times. Now, I always say this, if the false teaching is really bad, because a lot of people like to take something small. I disagree with Brother Brian on Christmas. I disagree with him wholeheartedly. I am not against celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But all I have to ask is, is God the God of truth or the God of error? Okay? And when it comes to Christmas, is the practices of Christmas found in the Bible when it comes to the birth of Jesus Christ? No. 
which, and, the, and that he mocked it, but even the birth of Jesus Christ was Jesus born in December. No. Is God the God of truth or the God of error? I disagree with him on that. But it's not major. This is the things that are major. If somebody is preaching a false gospel, you show them the true gospel and you preach the gospel to them. If someone's preaching a false godhead, you show them the true godhead and if they reject it, you preach the gospel to them. They're lost. They're worshiping a fake Jesus. If they, if they believe in the Trinity, they're worshiping a fake Jesus. They're worshiping the Catholic Jesus. Eternal security, you preach to them and you tell them, hey, the Bible says you're sealed into the day of redemption. Jesus said it is finished. Okay, God purchased, uh, be the church, church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. You can't lose your salvation. You preach that to them. They won't listen to you. Then you turn around and preach the true gospel to them. Okay. And I guess I could, we could keep going. Same thing with pre-time of Jacob's trouble. That I preach the gospel also because when you talk to them, my favorite study ever was done by Brother Brian in King James Video Ministries of the false god of post-trib Christians. And I think that's what it was. And he goes through through the whole Old Testament to the New, explaining how God does not pour out his wrath, wrath, not punishment, but wrath on the righteous along with the wicked. It's a great, great video. But when you got someone who just refused to even use the time of Jacob's trouble as a title for that seven year time period, when the Bible uses it as a title, you're not dealing with someone who's saved. You preach the gospel. You try to tell them the truth about the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. That's your heart. Listen, I want to show you the truth. They want nothing to do with it. Preach the gospel and you're done. You don't get bitterness. You don't get hate and angry with them and start calling them names and start fighting with them and debating them and, and everything. No. You just stop it. Preach the gospel. If it's something, it's because I don't believe Christmas is something we can agree to disagree on. People always, always use that verse that one man esteemeth one day above another, one man esteemeth every day alike, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. They take that out of context, big time, when it comes to Christmas. Because the same people that are for Christmas say Halloween's a satanic holiday, and a true Bible-believing Christian will have nothing to do with it. I can quote that same verse back at them, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. No, Halloween is satanic and wicked. The roots of Christmas, not the birth of Jesus Christ, but Christmas is satanic and pagan. Okay? But it's not a salvation issue, it's a flesh issue. It's a, one of those holidays that people love their flesh, and that's why they try to justify it over and over. But I could go off forever on that. I don't always agree with Brother Brian on everything. But I'm not going to tell Brother Brian, well, you, def you celebrate Christmas, and he can say Weihnachten, and he can do all this other junk when it comes to twisting words. He still celebrates that holiday on the same holiday as Christmas. Okay? I'm not going to tell him, hey, you're lost and on your way to hell because you celebrate Weihnachten Christmas. Okay? It's not a salvation issue. I'm not going to get into a fight and an argument with him about it. Okay? Preach truth to him. It's between him and God at that point. And the correction. When you correct a uh, brother and sister in Christ, um, let's see if I'm losing track of where I was. And then you show love for, for that man by preaching the gospel to them after he'd been corrected by Scripture. And the correction is done in the presence of saved sinners, Bible believing Christians. Okay? When I correct a brother and sister in Christ through God's Word, it's, it's done with love. Um, if you're trying to correct a lost person that doesn't believe in God's Word, um, you just preach the Gospel to them. And the tough part when it comes to bitterness is being corrected. It's hard to say this. I'm, I'm holding my mouth open. It's hard to say this. Correcting, correction by a brother in, or sister in Christ through the written Word of God, and I've been uh, corrected by both a brother and a sister in Christ before, through the Word of God, um, afterwards when I realized I was wrong, I praised that correction. But your first response when somebody wants to correct you, your flesh tries to get in the way, and you want to put up your guard. You always want to put up your guard when someone tries to correct you. And that's not a good thing. And I understand, I'm letting the people brothers and sisters of Christ know out there, I know that feeling of someone goes to tell you you're wrong and the first thing you do is you get, you put a shield up or how many people that, oh I'm going to try to prove myself wrong that you go through the Bible hardcore and then you're like, 
Oh, I guess that person was right, but I'm not going to let them know they're right. That's called bitterness, you know. Don't let bitterness get in your heart whatsoever. Be humble and try not to have that first reaction of throwing a shield up. I've got to defend myself the moment someone tries to correct you. Correction is good, especially when it comes from God. Now, um, we need to have forgiveness. Uh, we're about to get hit Hebrews 12, which is the main point of me doing this study. But we also have to have forgiveness. I've forgiven Brian. He's made mistakes. There's times I see him say one thing and then do another. And as far as I'm not going to use, I'm not, one of the biggest things they try to attack Brian for is I'm only going to use terms in the Bible and then in his anger and bitterness towards people that were attacking him, he'd get angry and say, well, I know it's not in the Bible, but it, it's, it's basically there. That wasn't his heart speaking as far as him trying to say, I'm standing, I'm going to do my best to try to use words that are only found in the Bible. That was his bitterness getting in, getting in the way and the anger, and that's why he said that. But I've seen when he repented and said, hey, it's that bitterness that was in my heart that was turning into anger, and that anger was on the verge of turning into hate and all these other things. And he came out and he repented and apologized to the body of Christ. I forgave him. I don't go back and say, did you know what Brian did way back when? And I'm using this as an example to encourage the brethren to lift him up. And hopefully Brother Brian doesn't mind. And... But I don't hold what he did in the past against him. And people keep going to, like, that attack him and personally and everything will go back to those old videos. Uh, you need to have forgiveness. You know, you've had bitterness in your heart before, too. You're not above it. When someone comes out and truly repents, and they've got fruits meet for that repentance, and, and you can see the struggle, I mean, you've got to have forgiveness in your heart for that brother or sister in Christ. Don't hold it against them. Now let's head to Hebrews 12. Welcome, welcome to the coast. <laughs> Hebrews 12, um, verse 14. But in the shade, in the spring and fall in the shade, it gets really cold. That's why I got my sweater on. I've been, this is my work outfit for working around the property. Um, it gets very cold. But when that sun comes out and there's no breeze, Thank you, Lord, for the breeze, because there's a breeze. And there's no breeze, it gets really hot. Really, really hot. But Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Okay. I know this is Hebrews, is written to, the, to Hebrews in the time of Jacob's trouble, but for instruction in righteousness, verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Mm -hmm. Bitterness, it says root. Bitterness is likened to a plant, and I liken it to a weed. Okay, Bitterness can grow up overnight, next morning. Like I said, I went out there a few days ago, I already went out there, pulled some weeds, and did some stuff back there in the backyard and I went out there today and there was tons more. Um, evidently the people when I bought the place, the rock area, they didn't put any of the plastic down and it's just a struggle back there. It's going to take a lot of work for me to dig everything up, put the plastic down and put rocks back down. But working with your hands is a good thing. But it likens it to a root of bitterness springing up. Like it starts out small in you, and overnight it springs up, and the next morning you got a weed. Okay. But the part I want to focus on is thereby many be defiled. Okay. If I got bitter, and I came on here, and I just started attacking people personally, going over to Robert Breaker, attacking him personally, going over to uh, Steve Anderson, and attacking him pers personally, if I can get the words out, um, Edward P.F., anybody else out there that I believe to be false and that they're teaching heresies, and I go and I just attack them personally and I just spend most of my time attacking them, attacking them, attacking them waiting for them to make one little mistake so I can attack them, attack them, my bitterness, like a weed, will grow off onto other people that watch me. And the next thing you know, they've got bitterness in their heart. And the next thing you know, they're going off doing the same thing. That's why I said Edward P.F.'s ministry, his fruit of his ministry is bitterness. 100% bitterness. Okay. Hebrews 12, verse 14. 
bitterness. And you can tell it by the people who love him. Bitterness, bitterness, bitterness. Um, another great example. Let's see. But, uh, just uh, another thing. Bitterness should trouble you. Absolutely. That's one of my notes here. And it's supposed to as a Bible-believing Christian. Your bitterness in your heart, when you're saved, it's going to bother you. You're going to be like, why? There's times I walk and say, Lord, why am I always being... It's like you fall into a cloud, like a cloud shadowing you, like in a shadow. And you just start thinking negatively. Um, there's times I talk with the Lord about videos I could do, and I'll be talking about Brian, or I'll be talking about uh, Robert Breaker, or any of those guys, and I'll start talking like doing a video where I'm just like in my head talking with the Lord, like I'm doing a video just attacking them. And then I stop myself and say, Lord, I ain't making a video like that, okay? I'll make a video talking about bitterness, telling the brothers and sisters in Christ out there, you're not to have bitterness in your heart, and when you find that you do, you got to get that little thing out of there before it grows into a full-on uh, tree, you know, that's a big uh, weed. Um, I'll stand for the gospel, but I don't want to get on here and start making my ministry about attacking people, okay? I My ministry is going to be... Words have meaning to encourage the brethren, to encourage you to get bitterness out of your heart, um, to live peacefully among men, to promote prayer in these last days. People, we need to pray, 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 pray. And yes, there's times where I'm going to stand for truth and call people out that are teaching false teachings, but I'm going to do it through the Word of God. I'm not going to attack them personally, and I'm not going to want people walking away thinking, I hate the man Robert Breaker. No, he, he needs to get saved. He's lost. He's on his way to hell. He teaches a false gospel. He teach now that he knows the truth. He teaches a false god, Jesus, a false Jesus of the pagan Trinity, and he goes outside the source. Says he's not a Bible believer. But I'm not. I'm not going to attack him the way the other people have. I'm trying to make fun of him, make fun of that. And I, I, and someone might find one place where I slipped up and made a mistake of doing it. God be merciful to me. But I'm going to attack his false ministry, the teachings. I'm going to use the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, to do it. But you don't attack the person. Okay? I've also noticed that bitterness in people's heart can get them to fall away. And thereby, in the, uh, verse 15, And thereby many be defiled. A ministry can be destroyed by bitterness. Someone's bitterness can rub off on others. We talked about that. Therefore they become defiled. Um... I've seen so many people fall away from truth because of their bitterness. Their bitterness and their pride. They once stood for truth, but they got bitterness towards a man. Not this, they got bitterness towards the man, and that bitterness caused them to turn their back on this, the Word of God. Okay. I've seen men's ministries hurt, Brian's ministry was hurting when he started holding that bitterness in his heart and he started lashing out in his teachings. And he was teaching us, and I love Brother Brian, and I'm glad he repented. I'm glad it's a struggle that he's working on, which is evidence. There's so much evidence in his ministry and in his life that he's saved. That's why I can tell people, I believe Brother Brian is saved. But there's times where I'm, the study's going so great, and then he goes off on a tangent, and he's not really talking to me, a brother in Christ. He's talking to the lost world. And he's still trying to doing that, and he needs to work on that. But... Um, bitterness can hurt a ministry. It really can. Um, uh, bitterness can destroy your ability to be a, not the ministry, because nobody can destroy God's ministry, but it can destroy your ability to be part of God's ministry. Okay? It can hurt your ability to be part of God's ministry. If your walk with the Lord's messed up, you're not, God's not going to use you until you get your heart right with the Lord. So, what we've learned from this is bitterness hurts. It hurts relationships with the brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, your walk with the Lord it grieves the Holy Spirit. Your communication both with saved and lost. Your communication with saved. I've seen so many people that I believe are saved that I love very much. I've seen their comments. I've talked with them. And I see them going at it with each other. Okay. Um, uh, 
Bitterness will hurt your peace and the peace of those around you. If you're promoting, hey, I'm just going to attack people, attack people, attack people, I'm going to mock people's names, and yeah, I'm pointing this at Brother Brian of King James Video Ministries, I'm going to mock people's names, and next thing you know, he's got people that follow him thinking it's okay to mock people's names, and then they're mocking people's names, and it's everything gets so riled up. So you can kill the peace in your life, but your bitterness can also, if you're in ministry, can kill the peace around you. If you're married with kids, if the husband gets bitterness in his heart, it's going to kill the peace in the family. If the wife gets bitterness in her heart, it's going to kill the peace in the family of everyone around them. Okay? Um, bitterness can kill peace in your life and those of the people around you. And my biggest prayer for you is, if you've got bitterness in your heart, please, please, please take it to the Lord. Um, I've seen people say, well, I've repented, and I've got that bitterness, and I took it out myself. And I've seen it with Brother Brian, I've seen it with other brothers and sisters, where the root is still down there. There's pieces that they didn't get out. Um, when Brother Brian got mad, made that video that got to be taken down, he's still addressing the lost world. I've talked to Brother Brian about this, so I'm not just saying it behind his back. In the past, I've talked to Brother Brian about this. He came out and said, yes, I need to stop addressing the lost world. I need to stop fighting with lost people, just preach the gospel to them, on, like in the comment sections. He um, came out and said he had bitterness in his heart, and he repented of that. And it showed, when he did that video, repented for the next month, month and a half, the videos were amazing. The, and the quality I'm talking about is not the quality of the video, it's the quality of the words of the man behind the video. And then the, the evil one uses people like Edward P.F., to attack Brian personally and get that bitter, he, Satan wants that bitterness to grow back up in Brian. And he wants that bitterness to grow up on us. I mean, I, I'm starting to get attacked. I'm just starting out. Most of my videos are felt, focused on encouraging the brethren to have courage in this life, uh, especially in these last days, to pray for one another, to show them that words have meaning doing word studies. And I've got people already attacking me. And the number one attack I get is because. I follow God's ministry through Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries. They're not attacking what I'm doing as far as preaching the Word of God. I just get attacked because of, um, I think the word's by association. I get attacked by association with Brother Brian. And that, it's like, I already did a video a few, uh, yesterday I think it was, about that. But the thing is, is, I got attacked, and I told the brethren, Brother and Sister Christ Patreon, a month ago, I think it was, or a month and a half ago, when I started doing a few videos, um, I got attacked by a warlock, a guy who doesn't believe there's a God, my brain freezes sometimes, I apologize, um, doesn't believe that there's a God, maybe the word will come to me, and he attacked me, and I went, first thing I did, did I go back and type in there, you, how dare you attack me? You're a sissy britches. Um, you're a liar. You're part of an occult. And blah, 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 And just going, rrr, rrr. No, the first thing I did was I went over to um, Patreon Atheist. I don't know why that word. Sometimes, because of my seizure disorder that was so bad in the past, it's hard for me to grab words sometimes. And you'll see my words get slurred a little bit sometimes, so I apologize for that. He's an atheist, but he's... he's uh, playlist you look at it, it's all warlock uh, YouTube channels and stuff like that but I went to Patreon and I said you know what guys I got my first attack from an atheist praise the Lord now do I want that person to save I went back and linked the gospel message and said time's running out but I didn't let bitterness get in my heart I didn't attack the man I just preached the gospel now on his side he might think I'm attacking him but that's between him and God but on my side, I just preached the gospel. I wasn't going to argue with them. I wasn't going to let them get me into a fight or anything. I wasn't going to let them egg me into it. And right now, people are attacking Brother Brian's ministry hardcore, trying to get him to go back to that old man. Not the one that's lost, but I'm talking about that bitterness, the man that had bitterness in his heart. And they keep trying to pull him down. And he's, he's only human. Like I said, you're not to hold a man on a pedestal. Okay, I hold the word of God. I hold Jesus on that pedestal, and that pedestal is so high, <laughs> you know, 
You, it's almost like you can't see them, figuratively speaking. But uh, brothers, sisters in Christ, I'm praying for you. I'm so, so praying for you, okay? For this topic right here for bitterness. Don't let bitterness get in your heart. Don't fall into the trap that I've fallen into in the past, that people that they say great, great men are, uh, that have fallen into in the past. And if you are following Edward P.F., yes, the main reason I would say no, stay away from him at first, before God showed me this study, at first would have been because he teaches a false gospel and he's not really a Bible believer. And I could go through all this stuff. But even if you're against the true gospel, against the Godhead of the King James Bible, my number one reason to tell you that if you're truly saved, brothers and sisters in Christ, you've fallen away from the Lord, um, is to stay away from His ministry because it promotes uh, bitterness. And when you have that bitterness in your heart, you're never, you're never going to hear truth. It's a trap. Um, I, if I, I have bitterness in my heart in some areas, and I wouldn't listen to truth. And I had to drop and say, Lord, take this bitterness, and my eyes were open to the truth. Okay? You'll, you'll never sit, find truth with bitterness in your heart. And that's his main ministry. Bitterness, bitterness, bitterness. It's all it's about. Okay, hold bitterness in your heart. Attack, 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 attack. Not standing for the word of God, but attack, 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 attack. Um, the Godhead, the Trinity, and I'll leave this in, in before we close. Robert Breaker, I talked with him on his channel, and I talked to him about um, Godhead versus the Trinity. I made a quick video about why the confusion not confusion, uh, the controversy. Why the controversy between the Godhead the Godhead versus the Trinity? And I made my, my mention of, I, I told him the truth and everything. I haven't made a, a video since. You know, when it comes to the Godhead versus the Trinity, I'll say that Robert Breaker believes the Trinity, but I'm not going to go off and say he's wrong and he's promoting a false God, but I'm not going to go off into this big, huge video over him on the same subject over and over and over and over. He's been rebuked, he's been corrected, and the brothers and sisters in Christ out there can see that video. It's done with. But when you have a man that makes video after video after video, and if you follow it back, it's almost like he's re regurgitating the same garbage. Now, like I said before, I've seen videos against Brother Brian where there's some things they say are absolutely right. They're true. Absolutely right. Brian said this, and then he went against himself over here, contradicted himself. Um, but that's because, and the reason it didn't bother me as much as it bothered them, is because I don't have bitterness in my heart, like Edward P.F. does. And I'm humble. I know how to forgive a man who makes a mistake like that. Mm -hmm. I don't hold it against him. So, don't let bitterness get in your heart. And if it does get in your heart, take it to the cross. Take it to Jesus ASAP and say, Lord, get this bitterness out of my heart. I can't do it. I've tried. I've ripped it out so it kind of seems like it disappeared for a while. But it comes back on the same subject, the same thing. It keeps coming back. Why? Because only God can get that bitterness out of your heart. Only God's the master weed puller, as, as you want to say it like that. So, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Stay strong. Uh, stay in prayer. Um, so many people need prayer today. So many sisters in Christ that need jobs. Um, they're living in their cars, out of their cars. Uh, brothers uh, needing jobs to support their families. And brothers being surrounded by such wicked sin that the jobs they have, they're praying for other jobs. I mean, the cares of this world. And then I always pray for the brethren when it comes to temptation with the flesh. Uh, being led astray by wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, we definitely need prayer today, but for this video, we definitely need prayer for bitterness, that bitterness does not grow in our hearts as brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.